All right, folks, let's talk about what you'll need to study for your test on the characteristics of living things. In your VIP section, you have two different foldables that we did. One talks about the six characteristics of life on the front and the four needs of all living things on the back. You should study both sides of that, as well as the newest foldable, the five levels of organization. These two foldables contain nearly all of the information that you need to study to be successful on this assessment. Also of use to you will be working on your portfolio paper that will help you remember what we did in class and summarize your learning. And of course your glossary is going to come in very handy as it sort of serves as a study guide for this unit. Additional resources can be found by logging into Phoenix or student view slash parent view and finding my website on the class websites. My website contains digital copies of class presentations as well as copies of notes that you can print out if you lost yours. I also have links to review games, both ones I've made and other awesome ones I've found online that can help you study. And of course I've got links to this and other review videos to help you feel as prepared as possible for this assessment. So the class that we're taking this year is called Life Science. Before we can really get started on anything, we need to establish what the words life and science mean. Science comes from a Latin word meaning to know, and that's exactly what scientists try to do. They try to know as much as they can about the world around them. In this class, we will be focusing on the study of living things. This brings us to our next question. What does it mean to be alive? Life is a little trickier to define. The dictionary has lots of different meanings. When I asked you all in class what you would say is your life, you had a lot of answers for me. Clearly, life is full of a lot of meanings for us. To make things a little bit easier, we're going to come up with a scientific definition of life. Our scientific definition consists of six parts, or six characteristics that all living things share. All living things have at least one cell. All living things respond to stimuli in their environment. All living things reproduce. All living things have DNA. All living things have an energy metabolism, which means they have to use energy to power their life processes. And all living things grow and develop. These six characteristics help us explain the difference between a living organism like a butterfly, and a non-living thing, like mountains. Let's explore each of these characteristics in a little bit greater detail. All living things have at least one cell. If a living thing is made up of just one cell, it is said to be unicellular, while something that has more than one cell in its body is said to be multicellular. An example of a unicellular organism would be a paramecium, and an example of a multicellular organism would be a giraffe. Cells are the most basic unit of life. In our next unit, we'll go into greater detail about what all of the structures are inside an individual cell, but for now, just know that the cell is the basic unit of life. All living things respond to stimuli in their environment and do this to maintain homeostasis. One student said that a stimulus was kind of like a cause and the response is kind of like an effect. That might help you remember the difference between a stimulus and a response. For example, a sunflower will turn so that it is facing the sun no matter where the sun is in the sky. In this case, the sun acts as the stimulus, and the response is the sunflower turning so that it can always face the sun. All living things reproduce, which means they pass their traits on to the next generation. Some living things reproduce through a process called asexual reproduction. This simply means that an organism does not need a partner to pass on its traits to the next generation. Instead, a single organism can copy its genetic material and divide into two new organisms with the same DNA. This is kind of like cloning. Other organisms reproduce sexually, which means that genetic material from two parent organisms is combined to create a new organism in the offspring generation with a unique genetic code. All living things have DNA, or deoxyribonucleic acid. DNA is like the secret code that tells cells how to be cells. DNA is the code that tells cells how to make proteins, which dictate all of the cell's functions. We'll learn more about DNA in the winter of this year. All living things have an energy metabolism, which means that they use food or another energy source to power their life processes. Organisms get energy and use energy to power their life processes in many different ways. There are two main ways that organisms can get their energy. They can be autotrophs and make their own food, or they can be heterotrophs and need to eat other organisms to survive. 
Another word for autotrophs or autotrophic is producer. And another word for heterotrophs or heterotrophic is consumer. Producers can produce or make their own food by themselves. Consumers have to eat other organisms to survive. Some producers, like this cactus plant, use photosynthesis to create their own food source. Energy from the sun is absorbed and converted to chemical energy that's stored in the form of glucose for later use by the plant. Another kind of autotrophic producer is an organism that can do chemosynthesis, which involves taking chemical compounds and converting them into usable energy for the organism and its metabolic processes. Some organisms, like deep sea-dwelling archaea, do this process. There are also other categories of heterotrophic consumers. Some heterotrophs don't go hunting for their own food at all. Scavengers, like this crab, will wait and eat the scraps that are left over from another organism's kill, such as the scraps left over from a fish if a penguin eats a fish. Decomposers, like this bracket fungus, will break down dead matter and use that for energy to power life processes. Parasites are another kind of heterotroph. Parasites are organisms like mosquitoes that eat a little bit of a living organism without hunting for it itself or killing it entirely. All living things grow and develop. Living things share five levels of organization in common. The most basic unit is the cell. This is the smallest unit of life. When there are multiple cells of the same type serving the same function, this would be called a tissue. Tissues of different types that are working together to serve a greater function could be considered an organ. In this example, I have a single muscle cell, a muscle tissue, and then an organ such as your heart that contains lots of different kinds of tissues. Many organs working together on the same task would be considered an organ system. Here I have a heart and pieces of paper representing veins, arteries, capillaries in your cardiovascular system. All of these together would make an organism. Looking at it another way, cells are our most basic building block. Lots of cells together make tissues. Lots of tissues together make organs. Lots of organs together create organ systems and organ systems together create an organism. All living things share a common need for food or some sort of energy source. As we said before, some organisms create their own food and others eat other organisms for food. All living things need water. All living things either live in water drink water, or absorb water. All living things need some sort of gas to survive. For example, humans breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide, while plants breathe in both oxygen and carbon dioxide and release oxygen. All living things require living space or habitat. When living space is limited, it can be very stressful for organisms as they compete for the other basic needs. So now I'm going to recap everything really, really fast. Don't worry, you can always pause it and rewind it if I go a little too fast. Try to maintain homeostasis as we go over this review. That means try to keep calm and keep everything in your body level. All living things are made of one or more cells. All living things respond to stimuli in their environment. All living things reproduce. All living things have DNA. All living things have an energy metabolism. And all living things grow and develop. The smallest building block of life is a cell. Lots of cells together create tissues. Lots of tissues together create organs. Lots of organs together create organ systems. And lots of organ systems together create organisms. All living things need food, water, some kind of air or gas, and living space. Thanks for watching.